Last game on our list is Lifeboat. Designed by Ronald Wettering, artist is Matthias Katrine and Wolfgang Steinmeier, and it's published by Z Game or Z Man, I'm sorry. I'm assuming. I don't know which one this was. Is it Z Man that we played? Oh, I don't remember. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Was it? Z Man. Sounds good. So, anyway, Lifeboat is a game where your survivors from a bigger boat crash, I guess. Is that right? It doesn't really say. <laughs> We're going to say that. <laughs> you make so, up your own story. Yeah. A bigger boat crashed. You got on a lifeboat. Stuff is floating around in the water, and there's all of you on this small little boat, and you're trying to navigate to land. Unfortunately, everybody loves and hates everyone, and everybody's super greedy. So what happens is each player is going to represent one of the characters in the game. So each player is going to have a character card in front of them that matches the character out on the table. It's an identical card, and these are going to be in a line. If on the line, if you're looking at the left, there's a deck of cards that's called provision cards, and these cards are going to gear up everyone. Uh, but well, more on that in a second. And on the very right-hand side, at the end of the line, there's a deck for navigation cards that will get you closer to land and ending the game. So what happens is there's a phase where uh, a card per player is drawn from the prov provision deck. The first person in line gets to look at it, takes it, and they pass it down the row. So the last player in the row of characters gets the last pick. Then each player is going to take an action. And at the end of all those actions, there's a navigation phase where the last player in the row gets to decide among the navigation cards that are put in a pile, which one that, that gets selected. So desirable positions is first place and last place for the most part. <clears throat> now on a player's turn, what they can do is, a couple of different things. One, first, before I say that, is each character has two stats, and they have a survivability uh, score, which is basically like their strength, I guess, and their hit points. Maybe I have that wrong? Uh, their size. Uh, oh, size, you're yeah, right. That determines uh, their ability to fight, and also their hit points, yeah. and then their survivability, and that is victory points if they last until the end of the game. Right. So to offset characters that have a weaker statistic, they get more points for surviving at the get at the end. Whereas the characters that have a really high size, like maybe eight, they get less points at the end of the game because they're most likely going to survive. Anyway, what happens is on each player's turn, after you div divide up all those provision cards, the first player in the row gets to make an action, and the actions are pretty simple. You can either row the boat, right? And this is basically draw two navigation cards, choose one, put them in the pile, discard the other one. That's going to put your uh, a little coin above your character card to show that you rode the boat. You can also do some aggressive actions, such as, Eric, I really like the position that you're in. You should give me that and swap me spaces. Because maybe I want to get closer to the beginning and, and get a better pick at the provision cards. Eric can then d decide if he wants that to happen or he can resist against it and then we get into a scuffle. And during this scuffle, uh, players are going to get sides and things like that uh, or, or take sides on who they want to help out and then you're going to add up the, the sizes on both sides and whoever has the most is the winner uh, except for ties are broken by the defense. Now, at the beginning of the game, you do get a love and a hate card, like I said, and that's going to show you uh, who you love and who you hate. And that's basically going to be for scoring purposes at the end. Uh, and also it's, it helps drive the social aspect of the game as well, because I might not hate Eric, but I do hate who he's fighting. <laughs> so I might jump on his side in the case of these aggressive actions. Now, instead of just taking a position, you can also choose to mug somebody and take one of their cards at random or one of the cards they have equipped in front of them face up. And you're basically like, hey, Eric, I really like that ore you got there. How about we... I would never fight over that, actually. <laughs> but let's just say <laughs> an example. You fight over that, then he can resist, and we get into a scuffle again. Uh, or, you know, and then all the same stuff happens. Or he can just give it to me and nothing happens. Sometimes you want to do that because the losing side of the battle uh, not only loses the item or their seat, they also take a hit point. And that includes everyone who who joined in on that side of the, you know, that team in some of the characters only have three hit points. So one hit point is a lot, whereas others have seven and eight. Anyway, er everybody has, is there any other actions you can choose uh, to do nothing, do nothing. And then uh, play some cards. Uh, oh, has it an has an action is, on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, those provision card. cards. So each person gets an action. You keep going down the line and then 
After all the players have done their action, the navigator will pick up all those cards in the navigation, or if there is none, they're going to top deck the navigation card. And a couple of things will happen. One, if there is, uh, or the top of the card says who goes overboard, maybe because of waves and things like that or whatever. And those characters will be sent overboard and they'll take a point of damage, basically, unless they have a card that tells it otherwise. In the middle of the card, it will have a, possibly a picture of a seagull. If four of these are collected by the by the whole party, the game ends, and then you count up victory points. And lastly, the bottom section will say who becomes thirsty, and that is specific people. And on top of that, there's also possibly a symbol for an oar or a fight icon. And if you did either of those things, like you rode the boat or you fought, you also have to pay thirst for those as well. And you pay thirst by simply discarding water cards or cards that say they quench your thirst or whatever. I think it's mostly just water. Mm -hmm. And then, then you just do the, the rounds over and over and over again until either everyone is dead for some reason, or four seagulls have been collected. And there's a bunch of scoring, uh, through the items that you collect. Cause you can pick up cash or paintings and things like that. Some of the characters, special abilities might like to double the, point values of one of those particular items there's gems there's med kits so you can heal each other all kinds of sorts of things so um yeah matt what do you think uh let's talk you, about this you know i i was worried when we started playing this because <laughs> uh tim got me a little scared that i was going to absolutely hate this game um <laughs> it was not bad uh if you don't like take that kind of stuff do not play this game no nope. uh, <laughs> at all <laughs> if you don't like negotiating do not play this game uh but yeah i mean the game was not bad now i do not we played a shorter version of this game yes uh i would recommend that maybe uh i don't think i would have cared for the longer version i think you all even kind of agreed with that what, yeah, what's it, the changes it does go a little bit long sometimes uh the shorter version you all start with uh one hit uh well or hit you take one damage and then you only have to get three seagulls instead of the four now, i think that's a pretty i i like that way better the, I, I do as well the only right, thing yeah. that's kind of rough with that is if you have a three hit point person <laughs> you're, now down you're down to, down to two, two. <laughs> to, from the beginning but right. uh you know that is what it is uh, it, obviously in a game like this where you have more hit points i mean the 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 bigger person you know i guess uh is going to be a bully and just do their own thing um you know, maybe I should have just not fought back as much and just <laughs> yeah. and let my stuff be given away. Uh, you know, after I thought about it, I think the lower hit points are obviously meant to be played differently. Uh, right. So, you have to play. Uh, you have to find out some uh, good people to take your side, uh, or or it's all about that negotiation. And he's like, "All right, you know, this guy wants my card. I'm gonna fight him off." But I'm going to give it to you if you join me. Right. Or, you know, there's yeah. all kinds of different ways to negotiate, you know, people being on your side. Right. Yeah. yeah or you, you sort of encourage the people that you hate uh, to get into fights, even though you're not involved because you're a smaller guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And you wait and you pick your moment to pull out that flare gun, you know, and just blast them right at the end. Right. Yeah. So I, I would say uh, that is uh, definitely not for everybody. Like you said, um, as, you know, and some of those characters may uh, you may not like. You know, if you're you're a smaller person, you're not going to be able to get into uh, you know these fights as often, and you might feel kind of picked on. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the downsides. But I I do think that uh, it lends itself to uh, being a good game overall because of that negotiation and uh, diplomacy that you have to kind of do throughout the game. That's fair. This game sucks. No, I'm just, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The first couple of times we played this, absolutely terrible. I hated it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, to the point where I thought about doing a top five hated games <laughs> list. Yeah, this going to be on it. Or, yeah. It's going to be all five slots. <laughs> but then the last time we just played it, not only did we do the shorter version, but uh -huh. then I played a character that had a lot of hit points, and the game was dramatically different. Yes. Yeah, it is dramatic. Like, it is unfun. I, Matt, like it's unfun playing a character with low hit points. I, it can be. I think this right, is yes, one of those right. games that can fire on all cylinders, or it can it can go flat. Yeah, that's fair. Which yeah. I, at uh, not the, our last game, but the one uh, previous, I was the little kid, three hit points, but I I was still able to win the game by quite a bit because I was able to leverage, you know, different things. You know, having people join me, or you know, I won't steal from you. If you let me have your spot. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but, yeah. but like, if we were rude, 
we can literally just say, okay, we're going to fight you every single time. Everyone group up and there's nothing you can do sure. at, at all. Well, I guess you could just decide to be like, okay, take it. Okay, take it. Right. And then it's completely unfun. Perhaps. Because <laughs> because the kid's, the kid's ability is super annoying. It yes, allows it you to steal a card from somebody with no repercussions. Yeah, just their face down cards. But I right. guess you don't want to do it too many times because then that will happen. Yeah, you don't want to make too many en enemies. It was our fault. We <laughs> let Eric do it too many times. <laughs> you the enabled weakest, them. The yes. weakest <laughs> characters have the most uh, impressive abilities. Right. Uh, the kid can steal everything he wants. And then uh, Madame Wong is uh, someone who can just use water when other people use water. Right. So she doesn't take damage from thirst. Mm -hmm. and, and also the uh, the the you when you use water you can also use the little thing that gives you plus three hit points yes. the the people's like surge of power oh, or whatever right. oh. it was called liquid yeah, the liquor yeah liquid courage right. yeah. liquid courage yeah <laughs> so basically they can't use that against you because you get to drink it as well right so that that was pretty cool I agree yeah the the abilities and your survival points do I don't know if they a hundred percent make up for the, the but you do have to play it completely the size different difference, right yeah. yeah. So I had a better time playing with a bigger character, mm -hmm. but the scoring is still whack. The yes. scoring is straight whack. One thing I'll say <laughs> I don't like about the game is... The scoring. <laughs> <laughs> is the love-hate things. I, I think it needs to have the love-hate relationship in there. Yes. Um, but um, when you love yourself, you have no, no one else to kind of uh, get your back. Uh, and if you hate yourself... Uh, then, then you can score the most points in the game. Then you play a little <laughs> differently. You don't score yeah. for yourself, but you want everybody to die. Not only is that uh, one of the bad aspects about that game is it makes you uh, make the game go longer. Of course, if you have uh, you're in charge of navigation, you know you might discard those cards with uh, seagulls, the seagull uh, seagulls on them, because you don't want to find land just yet because too many other people are alive. You yeah, want, you want some people to die. Before we get to land. Yeah. But that that leads to interesting dynamics at times because you yeah, think that's right. the guy in the back of the boat, he's got to go because I don't trust him. I think he's trying to kill us all. Right. And that and, did happen. And you can try to convince <laughs> other people that, hey, help me out. I'm going to take his seat. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a lot that can happen in the game that can oh, yeah. be negotiated and discussed. And, and every time I've played this game, uh, it hasn't always been a great experience, like I said, but it's always told a story. The theme really comes through with the love and the hate cards and what you're doing and trying to do in the boat. I think it always tells some kind of a story, which I really enjoy. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Uh, the, the the other thing is when you go unconscious and then everybody just loots everything <laughs> off right. your body. Yeah. That's, that's silly. That's bad. That's uh, so I mean, silly. It makes sense. <laughs> you can't resist. Making <laughs> sense and translating your pockets to... and take what I want. <laughs> but making sense and translating into good gameplay is is a thing. You know what I mean? That's true. Like, I get it. Right. I'm unconscious. I can't say no. You can take all my stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what happens is one person goes unconscious and then it's, who cares if you love or hate them? It doesn't, even if you love them, you're cool with them not having any cards because they can't right. beat you. And, and that's the but they're not dead, so you get your points. Exactly, which is why you want to keep them alive. But right. they're essentially out of the game. They're basically. essentially out of the game, right. There but is... then they could still win, which is even stupider. Because well, if they were a masochist and like, they go unconscious, and now they're not a threat, and then everyone else starts dying. Oh, if they're a psychopath, yeah. Yeah, and then, or, no, or sorry, if everybody just kills each other and you're the psychopath, then you get tons of points. Yeah. Because they killed each other, and then right. now you're like, we. Crazy, right. crazy things can happen. <laughs> Whereas everybody so else gonna, can... It, yeah. it does make it uh, a different ways to play, which does add to it, but I don't think it adds enough to it to uh, uh, to be good in the game. Yeah, the scoring's crap. Yeah. A, large ne <laughs> <laughs> a large negative is the fact that for a longish game, it does have player elimination. That is true, that is true. But typically, the player elimination doesn't happen until later on. Exactly. Yeah. Because there's no if, if sense of killing people early well, on, right. you know, unless they're just being the kid and taking all your stuff. <laughs> 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 that character might be the only real target every game, because it is incredibly annoying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, I don't know. The other thing we did that I didn't really mention, we played with the weather expansion. Yeah, we, we have uh, expansion 1, 2, and 3. But, uh, yeah, the weather one wasn't our favorite. Yeah, the weather one wasn't the favorite. It's just, it, it dictated too much. Right, yep. And then everybody just felt, falls in line with doing what it says. Uh -huh. Maybe there's some weird strategy to it. I don't know, but. I mean, there was some good and some <laughs> bad, 
If but, it says like you take double it, thirst when you row the boat, no right. one's rowing the boat. Exactly. So way to go. The game's another round long. Right. <laughs> Tip yep. probably. Uh, there is expansion two and three, which does uh, <laughs> both of them add one character and some other cards that uh, you you put into the decks. I think those were fun. Right. Yeah. Yep. I agree. The weather deck is one of the weaker. Yeah. Parts, for sure. Well, cool. Anything else? I think we hit all the topics that we were talking about for it. All, yeah. the, all the bullet points, sorry. Yeah. It's re-implemented by the same uh, designer, Jeff Siedek, in his next game, which was uh, Desert Island. Did you play that? I, yes, and I think it solves some of the issues that uh, that Lifeboat has for some people because instead of just being a boat where the front and the back are the only important parts of a boat, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, apparently, th- this one, you're on an island, so every spot on the island is a location that has a power. So you decide where to go and, and, and you know, you push people out of a place because that's the place that heals you or that's the place where you get bananas. Or, oh, that's pretty know. cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it Do adds you have that to the one? game. Yes. Oh, we should play that. We should. Yeah. All right, any final thoughts? Last things? Blah, blah, blah. No? Uh, overall, I liked it. Uh, like I said, not for everybody. Some people are not going to like it and it might also change, you know, depending on your playthrough, which characters you might have and depending on your play style. That is true. It, it it really depends on what comes out and what character you get, if it's going to be a good experience. Sure. Well, I, I guess it could just be... There's a lot of fun. I laughed a lot. Right. And I think it kind of lends itself to but, that. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> You're at times laughing at other people's expense. It can be a yeah. pretty yeah. salty you, game. Some, some groups might need to fill out that friendship contract before right. the game starts <laughs> that they're not going to hate each other afterwards. Yeah. Because they can get that brutal, so... Well, anyway, that is Lifeboat. 